let's say we want to do this synthesis. We want to take this starting material and turn it into this final product. What reagents do we have to add to go from this starting material to this final product? We can put in this asterisk to show that this is the hidden carbonyl carbon. But we should not put an asterisk on either of these oxygens, because these are not the carbonyl oxygens. These are the oxygens from the alcohols. We're going to add a carbonyl oxygen by adding H3O+. So I'm going to put the asterisk here to show that this is where the carbonyl oxygen is coming from. And now we have to go through that mechanism. ourselves of what the three main things are going to be. What were the three main steps for the forward reaction? Well, first step, the nucleophile attacks and breaks this pi bond. The alcohol attacks and breaks the pi bond. Second step, carbonyl oxygen leaves. And then third step, the second alcohol attacks. So now the three main steps will just be the reverse of that. First, one of the alcohols has to leave. Then it can be replaced by the carbonyl oxygen coming in from the water. And then the second nucleophile can attack. I'm sorry, and then the second alcohol can leave, and that will allow us to reform the pi bond. So we're just going to reverse the three steps from the forward reaction. Can you say those three and reverse them more times? Sure. To reverse this, first thing you have to do is have this oxygen leave. Mm -hmm. That'll take us back. Now have this oxygen leave, and then separately have this oxygen come in. Okay. And then we have to have this oxygen leave and have this pi bond reform. Okay. Let's take a look at this on the handout, because this is complicated. So we're still on the uh, page one of the handout. But now we're in the right-hand column, because the right-hand column is the reverse reaction. So now we're looking at the right-hand column for reve revealing a hidden carbonyl with H3O+. Notice that here we're going to read from the bottom up. So here we're starting with an acetal or ketone. Now what are the three main steps? Well, in the forward reaction, um, the last, well, we're basically going to reverse each of these steps. <coughs> So here, the last thing that happened was the second alcohol joined. So here, the second alcohol is going to leave. What happened here in this step was that the carbonyl oxygen left. So here in this step, the carbonyl oxygen should be joining. That's the reverse of that. And the first step for the forward reaction is when the first alcohol attacked, breaking the pi bond. Well, the reverse of that is for the first alcohol to leave, allowing the pi bond to form. So these three main steps are just the reverse of these th steps over here. But it can be confusing to reverse them, so we have to put them on paper. And all of the protonations and deprotonations have reversed, too. The last step here was the, this oxygen deprotonated, so the reverse of that is for this to protonate. Mm -hmm. Here, this oxygen was protonating, so here the carbonyl oxygen should be deprotonating. Here, this was deprotonating, so this should be protonating. So I'm simply taking this column and reversed everything. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to reverse all of these all along the way. So let's start with this right here. Um, we have that the nucleophile is going to protonate. I put nucleophile in parentheses in quotation marks because it's not really a nucleophile anymore. It was a nucleophile in the forward reaction. So when I say NU here, who do I mean as the nucleophilic atom? Who's the nucleo who was the nucleophilic atom from the forward reaction? The alcohol. That's right. So that means this oxygen here. That's the first thing that has to protonate. It doesn't look like a nucleophile. It's not a nucleophile anymore, but it was a nucleophile in the forward reaction. So the first thing we have to do is protonate this. And the way to show that with H3O plus is like this. This is H3O plus, right? I've just broken off one hydrogen. Right. So this shows how H3O plus can protonate something. And that's because when we last finished, it deprotonated. That was our last step, right? Yeah. So let's draw what this would look like after it protonates. That gives us this. happens to this, this had a positive charge, mm -hmm. and it gained electrons, so now it's just neutral water. Okay, 
So can we look at that as an H minus? Who? So this one right here, can this be considered like an H minus? Let's see. I guess no. We can't look at it that way. This is a neutral hydrogen. Mm -hmm. This is a neutral hydrogen. Uh, yes, yeah, just a neutral hydrogen. This reaction should make sense. All that we have here is, first of all, this oxygen is at the tail of an arrow. Right. That should make sense because it's got a lone pair. Things that lone pairs like to be at tails. And now this hydrogen here is kind of acting like an electrophile. Mm -hmm. Well, that should make sense because it's part of a positively charged compound. Mm -hmm. Things with positive charges like to be at heads of arrows. So it makes sense that this hydrogen should be at the head of the arrow because it's in a positively charged compound. The H3O plus just is acting like an acid here to protonate this oxygen. So this reaction does, uh, does make sense based on the way we normally think of electron pushing arrows that the, this should be at the head of the arrow, and then this oxygen would like to gain the electrons from this bond to get rid of the positive charge. And now the H3O plus is just water. Okay, now following along with our mechanism, now that that has protonated, now NU has to leave the carbonyl carbon. And who do we mean by the nucleophilic atom? The oxygen. Yeah, the alcohol oxygen. So let's show the electron pushing arrows for that. This needs to leave. That's right. So we just That's right. That was the whole purpose of this protonation. Because mm -hmm. after all, this is not a good leaving group. This is not a good leaving group, but now that it's protonated, it is a good leaving group. So the whole purpose of that protonation was to make this into a better leaving group so that it can leave. We know we need to kick this off because we're trying to undo all the things we did in the forward reaction. When this leaves, oh, yeah. it leaves as this alcohol. So now we're at this point, the nucleophile has left the carbonyl carbon. Now, we need to replace that with the thing that's going to be the carbonyl oxygen. And what's going to bring in the carbonyl oxygen? The water. Mm -hmm. um, Remember that H3O plus means water plus acid. Mm -hmm. So now I can just bring in a water molecule. And here's where I should really put the asterisk on this oxygen to show this is the oxygen that's bringing in that carbonyl oxygen. We're making progress because now we've gotten the carbonyl oxygen back on, which is what we wanted to do ultimately. Mm -hmm. Now just by looking at this, it should be clear what has to happen. Nature doesn't like this charge. Right. So we'd like to deprotonate to get rid of that charge. You can see that confirmed on the handout. So we need to get rid of that, deprotonate. Right. And you can see that confirmed on the handout here. After the carbonyl oxygen joins as water, the carbonyl oxygen has to deprotonate. So who can take this proton? Well, we can use water to take the proton. Remember, we've got lots of water around. So we can use water for whatever we want. We're basically using water as the solvent here. Okay. So we can use water. Well, that's because we only have H3O plus right Yeah, this is just acid plus water. All that we have here is acid plus water.
So we can show a water molecule taking off this proton. Now it gives us this. 